Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars These massive trains are the California Zephyrs and they're taking me to... Let's have a look around my room. My bed's still out. This is where I was sleeping. These bars are heavily located, but the trouble is if you've got luggage, like I do, that's where it's all stored. And I won't lose sight of me... Uh, Try right, I don't, not after the ship. So those bars are useless, so I've got to get across to the toilet and sink when the train stopped the places. If I need the loo when it's moving, it's pretty tricky. So it's a nice little room. Down to the downside, apart from apart from the bars, there's the toilets for the rest of this car and right outside your room, so you get the constant banging and flushing and knocks going on and off from the other from the other passengers. But if you shut the door, it does dampen it a bit. It, it takes the edge off it, because uh, otherwise it just drives you mad. There's a bit of a smell here too today. There's uh, somebody going to be working on that toilet. You might be able to see there's a bit of a wet brush there. We had an overflow. So they're trying to clear that. I might wait for that to finish before I have my breakfast because it's a bit smelly. So this is my room and my Californian Zephyr, which I'm in for two nights or well, one more night because I've just spent last night here. Okay, catch you later. Quick word about the Amtrak meals that come with the room. I'll just uh, add extremely crispy bacon and uh, omelette or scrambled egg with potatoes. Very cold, not very nice. You might want to make your own. Now, if you want a decent cup of tea on this train or even in this country, you must, like me, bring your own tea bags. I've just asked for some hot water and I've put a Yorkshire tea bag in there. I got some milk, I got my sweet milk. Now I get a decent cup of tea. It's the only way. The train stops every now and again and people can get off for a cigarette. And I chose to go to the door, get some fresh air, get away from the smell of the toilet. They've put them out of order now, so there is no banging in every couple of minutes, which is good, but there is a smell. It's not very nice, especially if I wear mine. Uh, I haven't done anything else in it because I didn't. And uh, yeah, Whew, I'm gonna have a wash and get changed out of me Chicago cubs. Hello, Robert. Hey, man. What's the news on the toilets? I mean, it's going to be slopping out the top in a minute. I just shut the door to get changed and washed, and the stench in here was so bad I wanted to be sick. So I had to shut, I won't, can't shut this door, it's so bad, the smell. Is there another room I could have? No, sir. It's the bad room on the, on the train there. What can we do then? What's happening? What's the score? You're ready to put some bleach in the toilet to help, help hold out the smell. Put some bleach in the toilet? help hold down the smell. Okay. Now, if you're unbearable, you need to get off the train. They're not going to fix it. They're not going to fix this till San Francisco? Right. They're not going to fix this until San Francisco? Right. I've got another two days and a night on here with no toilet. Is that right, Robert? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a there's a, an elderly lady down there as well in trouble. It's so funny. Yeah, it's 
knocks around and all the toys. I, I mean, if what, I can do something. What can I do when it starts coming out of the into the into the room? Put a towel down. Put a towel down. Okay. So I've got another two days and a night on here. And Robert tells me I've got to put a towel down when it starts slopping all around my feet. Thank you, Robert. If I knew anything better to tell you positive, I would. But I'm not going to yank your leg or tell you this and that. They looked at it in Denver. The mechanic guys, they said it's some type of pump that doesn't have the suction to pull down the sewer waste. Now, they couldn't replace the pump, and if anything, the only place that has the pump would be in Oakland, San Francisco. Okay. So what's the longest stop we have? Salt Lake City. Yeah, when's that? About 11 o'clock tonight. I could get off and use the toilet in another, because I don't want to do a number twos in that long. Yeah, probably in the station. Oh, I'm going to call it a number two. All right, the situation. He's going to call ahead of the station, and that's the situation. This is all you can hear the old lady down there. Nothing's going to be done after my conversation with Robert. He's very kindly put a couple of towels down over the toilet. A fellow called Dave has just been to see me, and uh, Dave's going to see what he can do. They're going to let me off and a stop at an hour or so Grand Central Station somewhere or other. They all seem to have that name. And um, I can use the toilet on the station, so the train will just have to wait. Um, I'm gonna try and get me a room that I can sit in during the day, but this is where I sleep. <sighs> it's all a bit grim. Oh well, it's happening to me. Doesn't mean it'll happen to you. <laughs> See you in a bit. Yep. Well, we got an update on the toilet situation. Um, the towel's working-ish. But next station, they're going to move me to another room. I'm getting down with the crew, in fact. So there's some room with the crew's quarters, which is still down here. So I'm going to pack up, and they're going to move me down. The toilets are working there. So... Uh, Hurrah, hurrah. Oh. After later. nine hours of the toilets not working and now conversation with Robert where I had to put towels over it to San Francisco. As my travel agent Linda says, complain. Something will happen sooner or later and so it does. I'm in a pretty much identical room, but this is in the cruise quarters. And uh, look at that, toilets open oh, and I can breathe easy. Now I just sit back and enjoy Colorado. As we go through Colorado into the Rockies, we follow the Colorado River. And there is a tradition on the Colorado River. If you're on the Colorado River and Amtrak goes by, there is an age-old tradition. And I wonder if you can spot that. Lots of people having fun. A guy there got his bum out at the train. <laughs> oh. And every now and again you have these little slipways to get in to the river. Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're... everyone's getting their bums out. Sometimes they're small and sometimes they're really big slipways with car parks and stuff. And people bring their picnics and stuff by the river. And they're able to get back because they're all going the same way. Have you noticed? No one's going upstream. That would be quite a paddle. So there must be someone down river to meet them in a car or something. What a way to spend the day. Yeah, careful what you say. There's a person trying to paddle the other way. Yeah, getting nowhere. <laughs> Sods all that, isn't it? You say something and then somebody comes along and does the opposite. 
climbing up into the Rockies for about an hour now. The ears have popped a couple of times. I wonder why they're called the Rockies. Oh, that's why it's called the Rockies. Wagon great big rocks. Said we're about to enter a tunnel. It's a hundred years old and is over six miles long. Must have taken some time to tunnel that out for this rock. And your eyes will be coming up shortly. Tunnel just there ahead. Well, I don't know if you heard that, but the conductor said we're about to go into the world famous, and he named the tunnel, but I couldn't hear it. And then he said, Hello, darkness, my old friend. His name's Robert. This amazing place is called Ruby Canyon because the rocks are so red, I guess. And we're coming out of Colorado, leaving the Colorado River and entering Utah. In the 1700s, a thunderstorm caused all the red dust from the Rockies. You see the Rockies, they were, were quite red. All the red dust flowed into the river and the Indian population who were about to settle there called it the Color Red River. And that's where Colorado comes from. Color Red. Colorado. Interesting, eh? So I won't be reaching for my camera as much in Utah as even the mountains look like fluffy dollops of mashed potato. Or your blankets not made on your bed. Oh, time for bed. Should be in San Francisco tomorrow. Well, the sun has risen in a, another state. This morning I'm in Nevada. On my way to San Francisco, we'll be there in about 12 hours, I believe. Uh, my last night on the train, looking forward to a night in a hotel. Very glorious day. Well, this morning, for breakfast, I'm going to try grits. Never tried grits. I never mind with some honey. Sometimes they just put salt, pepper and butter on there. But as it's breakfast, I'm going to make mine sweet. Grits. Tell you all about them in a bit. See you later. Well, the grits for breakfast were pretty good. And to describe grits, it's like porridge made of corn. It's smoother. And yet there are all these loads of tiny little bits of... Not grit, it's soft. But I guess in your head you would think, it's full of grit, though it's not gritty, in a gritty sense. So, coming up to San Francisco, did a, a long and enjoyable, I've seen some wonderful sights in that sea river. See you later. Let's see what San Francisco wants for us. See you in a bit. Now, when you move cars, as I had to because of the toilet issue, you also get a new attendant. And I was upgraded from Robert to this beautiful lady, Becca, or Bex as I call her. And she looked after my every need. And the main issue with travelling alone across a country is not obstacles or things, it's people. People are your biggest obstacle. They're either ready to help you, like Bex here, or they're just bone idle uh, and unwilling, like Robert. And I've met a couple of Roberts along the way. Hopefully I won't meet any more. Right, so, I'll see you 
next in San Francisco on my way to Alcatraz and back we'll have a little look around Alcatraz so I'll see you all in a bit fly me to the moon let me play among the stars 